Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Arun Vijayaragwan and I'm a principal product manager for SDK and Connectors. Joining with me today is my colleague Eric Bichard, who is a developer advocate. The motivation behind building Ottoman was of course the rapidly growing JavaScript community and their needs. But in addition to this, it came from the developers who are trying to write repetitive code while building applications, which then became hard to maintain and debug. In our session today, Eric and I are going to take you through the journey on how to maximize developer productivity and yet have a seamless, reliable, and developer-friendly experience in building applications with Node.js and Couchbase using Ottoman. We know this session is pre-recorded, but Eric and I will be available to answer all your questions over chat. Let's now look at the agenda for today. We'll be looking at some of the basic concepts on how data is stored and retrieved within Couchbase. This should likely benefit someone who's absolutely new to Couchbase. As an overview, we'll learn about what an object document mapper or ODM is and what are the benefits of using an ODM. Next, we'll take a comprehensive look into elements and powerful features of Ottoman, such as schema, models, documents, and more. We will also talk about how to build database queries in a more simple and yet elegant way. You will see all of this in action as Eric will steer us through a demo that will cover what we have talked so far and much more. Finally, you'll also witness the future of Ottoman and why you should stay vested. All right, why wait then? Let's get started. Over the past few decades, JSON has been the de facto standard of the web. JSON is known for being lightweight, faster, and more than anything, easy to read and is widely accepted as a data interchange format. JSON also natively works with JavaScript, which almost every developer is familiar with today. Its flexible data modeling makes it more seamless in integrating with web and mobile applications. We here at Couchbase love JSON, and we have built quite a few features that are JSON-centric, like the nickel service, analytics, and more. Let's now see how data is stored in Couchbase. For those who have been using Couchbase, you would be already familiar with Bucket. For those who do not, Bucket is simply a container that stores documents. If you're coming from a relational database background, it's somewhat similar to a database. Within buckets, you can choose to store data either on disk or in memory or both, depending on the type of bucket you choose. Grouping documents inside bucket are usually done by adding a type field to the document. Although it serves the purpose, it may not be the most efficient way. Starting Couchbase Server 6.5 in developer preview mode, scopes and collections were introduced to help further grouping data. These features will be fully made available in Couchbase Server 7.0 when it goes GA next year. As compared to the relational database, a scope can be thought of as schema or namespace. On the other hand, collections can be compared to that of a table. Most use case for using scopes and collections are when you are wanting to build a multi-tenant or a high density application where grouping of data is essential. The smallest unit of storage is the document. You can think of it as rows inside tables. Of course, Couchbase is not limited to just JSON documents, but for the interest of this conversation, we'll stick on to JSON. Note that not all features fully support scopes and collections in developer preview version of Couchbase server. Now that we have seen how data is stored in Couchbase, let's now see how we can retrieve and update the documents. Key value operations, sometimes also referred to as data service, is the simplest and quickest way to retrieve and mutate data where the key of the document is known. Every document 
in the database has an associated ID or key that is unique to that document. Data in Couchbase clusters is stored in data nodes and within data nodes, the data is distributed in V buckets, also known as virtual buckets, just like you see in this diagram. A mapping of V bucket to the node is stored in the cluster map. When a document is saved to the database, the key goes through a CRC32 hashing algorithm, which is used to identify which V bucket the document needs to be stored. And the same concept is used during retrieval of the document by looking up the V bucket information from the cluster map. As you see, it's a simple lookup operation, making it faster, reliable, and efficient way to manage data. So in nutshell, if you know the key of a document, then a simple key value operation is the way to go. However, not always you want to look up data using documents key. There are instances where you would want to retrieve data using other fields, for instance, you might want to get user information based on email address or a postal zip code. This is where you would start exploring nickel queries. Nickel is Couchbase next generation query language for comprehensively and declaratively using JSON. Nickel query is often used in conjunction with indexes for faster and optimal retrieval of data. Within Couchbase, you can create GSI or global secondary indexes and view indexes. It's worth noting down that indexes are eventually consistent, but consistency can still be achieved by specifying a consistency option while querying the data using nickel service. It's also worth noting down that nickel queries for scopes and collections is not supported in the developer preview version of Couchbase Server. Let's get introduced to Ottoman. A typical web application stack, just like you see, usually consists of a front-end application framework that's hosted by a web framework, like for instance, Express, and powered by a runtime like Node.js. Of course, backed by a NoSQL database store like Couchbase. Usually, in this type of application framework, your application is tightly coupled with the database, and there are several tools that are used to maintain consistency between application layer and the database. Finding the right set of tools quickly can become a big hassle. You end up with too many questions in your head. Is this tool free? Is this supported? Is it safe? Does it really fit with what I am looking for or do I have to compromise? Does it have all the tools I need? At times, you might not find the right tool you're looking for and you might end up somewhere here. At this point, you're already either frustrated or you have given up and you're ready to run away. Well, Couchbase has a solution for you. Of course, you know what I'm talking about and you guessed it right, it's Ottoman. It's like a Swiss knife tool, one solution for all your problems. It's open source, fully supported by Couchbase and the community. Of course, that's you and we do need your support. Secure, flexible, and has everything you need. Isn't that exciting? Okay, one question pops up though, why Ottoman? Ottoman is an object document mapper. Simply put, it maps applications object to your database documents. It creates an abstraction between your application and Couchbase, thereby decoupling them all together. Being an ODM, it does a lot of plumbing for you, like serializing and deserializing document to your object model, which would otherwise take a lot of time. Works natively with JavaScript, a common programming language you all know. You can take control of your data model by applying schema, manage relationships between your documents, and use built-in indexing strategies. 
Defense and depth is a necessity these days. Layers of validation is absolutely necessary to prevent any breach. By implementing custom validators, this becomes super doable and the implementation as such is very easy. Using middleware to take a complete stab at a data access layer by defining and implementing hooks. Make code reusable with the help of plugins. If you're looking for a data type that doesn't exist, by all means, you can create your own with the use of custom data types. So where does Autumn fit in the application stack we were looking at before? Autumn plays very well with Couchbase and Node.js and can work with most JavaScript-based framework. It's a layer that interacts with Couchbase and your application framework, providing seamless and yet decoupled integration. Let's now take a deep dive and review some of the powerful features of Autumn. Schemas and models. Schema is a building block for Ottoman. It defines the shape of your document, provides ways to define your indexes and constraints, associates validators, and much more. A model, on the other hand, is a wrapper around schema that natively interacts with Couchbase. It encapsulates built-in methods that would otherwise take a lot of time for a developer to build and be also repetitive if hand-coded. Document is the instance of model and is the smallest unit in the object hierarchy. Automan comes with a lot of built-in methods for models that can free you up from writing boilerplate code. One such example shown here uses models find method to find an airline by call sign. There are many such methods available that will simplify the way you interact with Couchbase database. These methods are simple and hides a lot of underlying complexity, allowing you to focus on other business needs. Also notice how you can extend the model's behavior by passing in configuration as options. For instance, in this example, if you're passing in the consistency level of local as an option to retrieve documents. We did say briefly what indexes are while discussing about nickel. Indexes are ways to retrieve data, sometimes quickly and sometimes the most performing way. With Ottoman, you can create three different types of indexes. Trio index creates an index on the data according to the defined format and structure. Few indexes are eventually consistent. That is, you can expect stale data and are least performant. Nickel indexes, also known as GSI or global secondary indexes, are the most performant and most flexible of all the available indexes. RefDoc index can be created only on fields that have unique values. For instance, a phone number or an email address are very good candidates. A RefDoc index creates a document within Couchbase that has a reference to the document scheme. In this example, we are creating a RefDoc index on the field name, assuming LN names are all unique. A call to ensure index, which by the way is a good and recommended practice, automatically builds the index within Couchbase. Ottoman supports all JSON data types like Boolean, number, string, date, and more. Reference between objects can be defined using the ref keyword like you see in this example, how a route is associated with an airline. Defaults are ways to provide a default value to a field. Like you see in this example, stop has a default value of zero. Constraints and validators are ways to eliminate risk and provide quality application code. You'll see in this example, how we have defined a phone validator and associated it with the phone field in the schema definition. We have also demanded that the name has to be provided and is mandatory in the airline model. Any action such as save or update made on the document would result in triggering the validation. And such an action would fail 
if the value are not provided appropriately. In addition to the default data type provided by Ottoman, you can now create your own data type by simply following three steps. Create the data type by extending iAutoman type. In this example, we are creating a data type that can accept a hyperlink. Register the data type. And lastly, use the data type. Isn't that simple? All right then, let's now explore the powerful and one of my most favorite feature, the Query Builder. Writing Nickel Query is not everybody's cup of tea. If you're not familiar with Nickel, learning a new language can be at times stressful. Well, that's not a problem at all. Query Builder helps build Nickel queries for you. All you need is to know JavaScript, and the more you use Query Builder, the more you will see yourself getting familiar with Nickel. There are three ways you can build Nickel queries. Use parameters, using access functions, and a mix of both. Building query using parameters is very simple. All you do is define the parameter, next pass in the parameter, call the build method that generates the nickel query for you. Building query using access function is different but it's easy. Here, you don't pass any parameters, as you can see. Rather, you use Ottoman's query builder access functions. Call the build functions, just like we did before, and that generates the nickel query for you. Lastly, you can build nickel queries using both parameters and access functions and then call the build method that generates the nickel query for you. In all of the examples we saw, it generated the same nickel query, but in different ways. Now that we have reviewed Ottoman features, let's see them all in action. I'll now hand it over to my colleague, Eric Bichard, for a cool demo. All right. Thank you very much for the slides, Arun, and hello, Couchbase Connect. Again, my name is Eric Bouchard. I'm a developer advocate for Node.js here at Couchbase. So like Arun said, Ottoman JS is an ODM, an object document mapper, that's uh, providing an abstraction between your app and Couchbase, right? And it's built, uh, Ottoman V2 is built to work with SDK3. And then we have an Ottoman V1, which, uh, is currently the, the release that's out and that works with SDK2. But um, currently what I'm gonna show you is what we have for Ottoman V2 Alpha. And let's go ahead and get started. So first off, I want to show you really quickly. This is the URL that Arun gave you before and it is case sensitive, Ottoman connect bit.ly ottoman connect and you can get all the resources and also find arun and myself on twitter and linkedin here you can link over to the ottoman v2 docs or the ottoman v1 docs not to be confused um, and it's pretty easy to use all you have to have is node.js and install ottoman um, the new alpha if you want to work with v2 that's all there is to it we'd also like to say that we would love to have any help that you can get this is an open source project uh, if, if you can help out, if you like JavaScript and work with Couchbase, we need help with documentation, potential bugs in the future, and all that kind of stuff. So just wanted to put that out there and show you these resources so that you know where to find them. What we're going to do is we're going to run through about 10 different code examples of how to work with Ottoman. I'm going to show you all the basics. All right. First, we're going to start off here in our Couchbase single node cluster. We're going to take a look at the buckets. We have one bucket called travel. There is zero items in it right now. And we have no indexes. So that's all going to change as we work with Ottoman. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is basically create a schema, a model, and a document, and then save it, persist it to the database. 
So I'll go over this once, and then uh, after this, we'll probably not go over this section again. So what we're doing here is we're importing Audubon, the library, and also model and schema from Audubon. We're connecting, and we are using the objects as parameters, to, uh, way of connecting in, in Audubon to Couchbase. But you can opt for a global config as well. Uh, use envir environment variables. You can have multiple connections and uh, we also have connection helpers that you should take a look at in the documentation. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create and define a schema for our airline models. Sometimes you would put this in another file or typically in an application you would put this in another file and import it into multiple files, but we're going to have it just in line here in the code for you. And the first thing we're going to go over is uh, again saving the document, but I also want to go over hooks really quickly. So we have the idea of hooks, which are kind of, uh, you can think of as when used with plugins as like middleware. Uh, each of the uh, individual hooks is a piece of middleware. Uh, think lifecycle hooks, okay? So as I save my document, I can do something pre and post saving of the document. So this is where I indicate um, what operation we're going to be applying this hook to. So it'll be the save operation, which you can find down here. So here we try to save the document and persist it to the database. So what we're going to get is when we uh, save that document, we're going to first get a message that says saving document, and then it's going to show the name in green. And then afterwards, it's going to show document whatever ID has been saved. Now, one thing to note here is that you do not have to use a plugin in order to use hooks. You could totally just use it like this. The reason we're using a plugin is for the sake of being able to reuse our code in different areas. So that's why you might want to use a plugin. After you set this up, you basically are just going to kind of register that plugin here uh, to the schema. And then uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to create an index uh, to be able to search by search ref by index. We're going to do that in file number three. Um, but let's go ahead and set that up so the uh, proper indexes and everything are created and the referential doc is there for us to use later. And basically what, what's going to happen is when we save our airline document, we are also going to create another document that's going to refer to that document to help us look up by key. Uh, next thing we're going to do here is compile our model using our schema, our airline schema, very basic stuff, uh, and then construct our document. So the idea is kind of um, you kind of create the schema, then you uh, create the model, and then you use, you use it uh, when you're creating your document. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a function called save document, which is just going to call cbairlines.save. And we've got to try catch around it in case anything bad goes wrong here. The pre and post hooks will run at this point. So let's go ahead and run this file. We're going to call it ensure indexes first, uh, which will just make sure that the indexes exist on the server. And then we're going to save the document and then exit out of our terminal. Uh-oh, let's see what we got here. Oh, I just didn't hit tab properly. Let's see here. Demos never go as you expect. All right, so that should go ahead and save our document. Couchbase Airlines, and then it'll show document ID has been saved. Great, so let's go over to our database and see what happens. Now here's our bucket. We've got two items created here, two documents. One is a ref doc, which is just a binary document pointing to the other document. And then we have our actual uh, document with a call sign, country, name, and ID. Great. Now one thing I'll notice, uh, or you should notice here, is kind of type and scope. Uh, scope is default, type is airline. This type of stuff might change as we get through alpha and to beta. So just be aware of that. Um, it, it may not be how you want your documents to be created. And we kind of know that. And we're working uh, on all the kinks and trying to make sure that the documents are created uh, as we would expect here at Couchbase. So that kind of work is uh, still going on. And that's why we're still in alpha. So things like that could change as we go from alpha to beta to actually releasing this. But I still wanted to be able to show you kind of everything that it does here. Next, we have indexes that have been created here. 
nothing really big to show here. Just uh, showing you that it's created not only the indexes, but also the bucket with the several uh, documents inside. Perfect. Let's move on to the second example. And through these, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly once I go up over the first one because they're all very similar. The first thing we're going to do is we're not actually going to use that ref index that, that we set up. We're going to try and search uh, just by call sign. So we've already gone over this stuff and airline schema, creating a model. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do find by call sign. And we're going to use a filter and options. Filter is just going to have the call sign. So the field and what value we expect. The options, we're just setting consistency to local. This actually I think is the default, so you may not have to do that, but it's here anyways. And then we're running airline.find. Now this is one of many different querying uh, methods that you can use. We've got find, we've got find one, we've got find by ID, and we're gonna use find and find one today for our different examples, as well as uh, a method that in our next file that would be created specifically for that ref index. But just know um, the ones that we have out of the box with Ottoman are find, find one, find by ID, remove, update, all the kind of things that you'd need to be able to uh, work with your documents on Couchbase. Finally here, we're just gonna uh, call find by call sign, which is just gonna run the, um, the function above here. And then it's gonna spit out the query results in the command line. So let's go ahead and run that. And there's our document. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So you've got a query result, and then we have our document with everything that we expect here. All right. Next one's gonna be very, very similar to this one, except that we are going to go ahead and uh, set up this airline schema index. And this should be a good time to really talk about what kind of different types of indexes that you can have in Couchbase, because we didn't go over that in the first file. So you can have ref docs. In short, you need to look up a document by a single value or a single attribute quickly. Um, this is the way to go here. You cannot combine multiple ref doc indexes to speed up finding something like all customers with first name John, last name Smith or whatever. But um, what you can do is you can use, you can create multiple indexes at the same time. Uh, like you could create a ref doc index, a view index. So you would just change this to view. Now a view is uh, using MapReduce under the hood. Uh, certain types of queries can be faster as they can be paralyzed over all the nodes in your cluster with each node returning only partial results. So one of the cons of this, uh, of views, is that they are eventually consistent. Uh, another one that we have is nickel. So you could do nickel also. These indexes use the new SQL-like query language available from Couchbase since uh, for nickel. And these indexes are more performant than views in many cases and uh, more flexible as well. And it uses GSI. So let's go back to RefDoc for now because that's what we already set up. And we're so by creating this, we are going to create a method in which we can use to uh, find this airline by name. And we're going to just search for Couchbase Airlines because that's the name that we set up for that document. Everything else is the same. And there's our document, right? So next one is find and update. And Pretty much the same thing here. We already kind of know how to use find one. We've already went over this function in the file number two. Um, but we're going to do after this is we're going to find this airline. And then when we're done, we're going to then pass that airline over to the update airline function. And so airline will come in here uh, as a argument. And we're going to update the country using the ID from the result above. Okay. So airline.update, country, United Kingdom. So we're just going to change it from United States to United Kingdom. We're going to send it over the pond. And uh, we're going to do that by ID and console log out, airline update success. All right. Let's go ahead and run this one. And there we go. So, so we have, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. So we've, uh, airline has been found. Right, and then we pass that into the update method and we update it and then we print it out again just to show that the country has in fact been changes, changed, changed from United States to United Kingdom. All right. 
Let's move on to number five, validate on save. So what we're doing here is we're using ottoman.addvalidators and we're uh, giving the validator the name of phone and the value is gonna come from wherever we, uh, so in the schema we have a phone here, a phone and it's type string and it's gonna use validator phone above here and it's just gonna check using this regular expression to make sure it's an actual phone number. If not, error out, print out the phone number in red and say it's invalid. Um, next we're going to create a airline model out of this and then an actual CB Airlines document, all right? So we're gonna try and create a couch, uh, we should actually call this UA or something for United Airlines. But anyways, um, we're gonna try and create United Airlines with a phone number that is bad. And this will not happen because we're gonna get the error here. So let's go ahead and when we run save, it's going to uh, kind of like a hook would call a function, it's going to use that validator function. So here we'll go ahead and save our document and then we'll catch that error and show you what it looks like. There we go. So phone whatever is invalid. Next we have query builder and we're going to go through three different types of uh, or three different ways of using the query builder. One using params, another using access functions, and then we're going to use kind of a mixed mode where we can mix and match the two of those. So the first thing we want to look at here is this function generate query. So it's an async function and it's going to create this params object. The params object has these fields select, let, and where. So our select statement will be, uh, or sorry, it'll select name and country. It will then create a variable that will hold our, uh, our name value of Couchbase Airlines. And then our where clause will be set up and where name uh, equals the value of name value and country is not null, we will find any records uh, or documents in the database that match that. Next, now that we have this params object set up, we say const query equals new query, pass in the params as the first argument, let it know what the actual uh, bucket that we're using in the database is, and then we will build that. So you can think of this build command here as, hey, go and take all of this and build a nickel query string out of it. So we then have execute query, which takes a query. We'll take that query string and then we'll run that against the database, All right? This is very similar to kind of how you would do this in like SDK3. So generate query first and then we will pass the result from that to our execute query and then run the query and return the results and then exit out of the terminal. Looks good. And as you can see here, we have our query. Uh, we've returned that. So if you uh, are ever having an issue with your query, you can just return it and uh, inspect it or debug that thing and figure out, okay, here is the, uh, the nickel query that is creating. I can go, you know, I can do a curl command or maybe go into the web UI and run it to make sure everything works. Um, but it did work because we are getting a document returned here with country and name, just like we asked for. So that's how you use params, right? Create the params, it's an object with fields, then you pass that in as params here. So the next one is access functions. So same, same setup up here, and then in our generate query function, um, let's see, are we on the right one here? We are not, this is the one I'm trying to show you. So our generate query, what it's gonna do instead of creating a params object is it's gonna create a query. Right, it's gonna be new query, nothing passed in here for the params, uh, indicate the bucket, and then we're gonna use these access functions, select, let, where, limit, uh, to actually build up our query, right? So a lot of people might like this, this uh, probably an easier way to do it, less code, easier to read, I don't know. Um, and then down here, the exact same thing. We're going to first call the generate query, and then we're going to execute query using the query string that it builds for us, which should be the same as before. Let's just go ahead and make sure that this works. And it looks like it does. Uh, the next one is query builder with mixed, um, which you can think of this as just, a, it's kind of a mix between the other two styles. So first we set up a where parameter, right? And uh, we go ahead and, 
a specify, you know, name equals name value country is not null. And then when we create our query, just like we did, uh, at, like the first thing in the, in, in the last file that we saw, we have this set up first, and then we can pass that in here as a parameter. So um, maybe everything else we want always to be the same, but this, this might change and it might get built dynamically or something, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of a way of mixing the two. So we've got our access functions here, we've got a query passed in. Notice there is no query um, access function here. So we are getting that by passing it in here. And one thing you can do is just get rid of that because it's the same in JavaScript. Uh, if they're both the same, you can just write where. And then we're gonna uh, log it out, execute it just like we did before. So let's go ahead and make sure this one works. And it looks like it does. So yeah, these are all the same, just returning the same document, just showing you different ways of doing the same thing. All right, we're moving through pretty quickly. So the next one we have is creating a custom type, all right? So in our situation here, um, we want to check to make sure that when we create this airline schema down here, that we specify that the field link is going to be of link type, right? So what we're going to do up here, let's go back up here, is we're going to create a class in JavaScript using, uh, I'm sorry, in ES6 using link type, extending the Ottoman I Ottoman type, okay? And we're going to give it a name and then just make sure that uh, this link, the value being passed in, uh, which is a string, is an actual valid link, okay? And is link is actually a function right down here. This is kind of like a validator. Just like, kind of like we did with the phone number. We're going to uh, run it against a regular expression, test that, make sure it's true or false, and then uh, do something here based on that. So if not, what we'll do is we'll throw an Ottoman validation error and say, hey, field whatever uh, only allows link, all right? So you would extend iOttoman type instead of using a validator to provide your application with a custom data type, not simply to provide validation. So a validator here is just a constraint that we've used for this type, but understand that you can do anything you want down here. Uh, and, and create a type and then have different constraints around it. So when we are creating um, a custom type, we wanna do three things. First one, define it like we've done here. Second, register it, and then we can use it. So we've defined it already. And then we register it here by creating a link type factory where we create a new link type. And then we just go ahead and register uh, using that link type name and uh, the link type factory. Pretty basic and then we're gonna use it here in our airline schema. Here we create uh, our model for airline and then create the actual document, United Airlines. So we're going to try and use this link, http uh, slash slash www.united.com and hopefully it finds that to be a valid link, otherwise we would get an error. Um, so the way we're gonna do this is we have the save airline function, and then we have the find airline function, right? So those should work uh, in succession with each other. Make sure I didn't do something there. All right. And then down here, we're gonna call them in succession and then exit out. All right, so here's our model that was returned. And it uh, looks like I had no problem taking that because it is a, an actual link. And by the way, one of our clients too. United Airlines is great. They use Couchbase. So I use them in my demo. <laughs> so next we're gonna show referential integrity and relationship constraints. And this is really cool. This is, um, this is gonna save you some time inside of your Node Express app or GraphQL app or whatever. So same before, we're creating, gonna create an airline schema, create a model, and then when we get to route schema, you know, it's still just creating a schema here. Uh, source airport is gonna be a string, destination a string, airline is gonna be a string with a reference of airline. That is important here, right? We wanna say that, hey, uh, this airline is going to have a reference of airline. 
and we're talking about this airline right here. Now, when we uh, create a route model and then uh, create the document for American Airlines, we're gonna create and save the airline, very simple, right? Uh, we've already created it and now we're going to save it. We're gonna create and save the route. So uh, const route equals new route, source airport. Uh, so this is actually creating the route document. Source airport is LAX, uh, de destination is Dallas-Fort Worth, and then airline is gonna be American Airlines and that's gonna refer to the actual airline document that we, we created up here and saved. So this is what we call kind of saving refs, assigning the ID from airline here. So in the, in the database, when you have this route, when, you pull, when we pull up this route document, we're gonna have an ID for an airline there. But on in Ottoman, we're gonna be able to populate the actual airline object. Um, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And so the, on the server, we can work with the entire uh, object together, you know, the route with the actual airline document inside of it. And we're going to save the route. And we're gonna find and populate the airline. So this is kind of like the last thing uh, we do here before we, we make this object available for us to use. So we've got a filter, um, source airport, LAX, search consistency, local. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get LAX route and we're gonna find one. Now, this wouldn't work in a real database because you'd have more than one LAX route, but this is a demo. So this just makes the code a little bit easier. So we're gonna find this one document in there, this one route that we have and then we are going to, um, we're gonna wait on that. And then once it's done, we will say LAX route underscore populate airline, right? This will take that airline and populate it into the LAX route here on the server side for us. And then we're gonna console log that out and you'll see that instead of an ID where that airline field is, you're gonna have a full uh, object there, uh, the full document. So we run create and save airline, then we create and save route, and then we find route and populate the airline at the end. Um, one thing I will tell you is that you can do things like this to get all fields. Um, you can do this to specify the depth of how many children you wanna populate. Uh, so you can use populate, uh, depop, you can depopulate, so underscore populate, populate underscore depopulate. Then we have underscore populated. So you can check if LAX route has been populated or um, we also have, uh, yeah, those are the only ones. So populate, depopulate and populated to see if it has been populated, right? All right, um, let's go ahead and run this. All right, so let's see what happened here. So success, American Airlines added, all right? So we've added the Air American Airlines document to the database. Success, route between LAX and DFW for American Airlines added, great. Our route was created also. Now let's retrieve that route and populate the airline. And what do we get back? We get back this uh, route document, which normally would just have an ID here in the database, but we get the full object so that we can work with it here on the server side. And that's amazing. This is gonna save you a lot of time. This is what we talk about when, when we say Ottoman is helping you to kind of interface with uh, Couchbase, but reduce some of the boilerplate that you would normally have to write on your own if this didn't exist, right? First thing JavaScript uh, developers usually gonna do when they come to Couchbase is look for a library specifically like Ottoman so that they can, um, they can have these features. All right. So that's all that I have. And with that demo out of the way, I wanna thank you for watching and I'll go ahead and hand it back over to Arun now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. That was an amazing demo. Let's now see what is the future of Ottoman and why you should stay vested. We expect Ottoman to go GA in December and to be fully supported. If you use Visual Studio Code, this would probably be exciting to you. We plan to build code snippets that will help with rapid application development. Our vision is to take Ottoman to the next level in building GraphQL plugins that can serve GraphQL APIs.
This is still being discussed though. So stay tuned by joining our forums to hear more from us. We do look forward to all of your support and contribution in taking RMN to the next level. Hope this presentation has given you enough understanding to get started on Ottoman and to build your next generation application in much more reliable and scalable way. We would also like to thank you for being such a wonderful audience. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us via chat or via forums at forums.couchbase.com. Thank you once again and have a good day.